Good evening and welcome to Random Access. I'm your host, Jim Tu, and tonight we're going to be talking to Will Nichols, a local musician and the producer and host of the long-running show on KMVT in the arts. Hey, Will, welcome to the show. Oh, I, I certainly appreciate you inviting me, and uh, uh, it's an honor to uh, uh, be on this side. <laughs> it's a different feeling, but I'm sure that we can uh, come up to a... Uh, agreeable uh, position, oh. and especially uh, on, uh, and a chance to uh, f uh, let people know about some things uh, behind the scenes of uh, director mm -hmm. and uh, some of the things that uh, have uh, influenced me uh, to join the arts okay. and the types of things that I do, uh, studying music and what, it, uh, what you have to do. All right. So, Will. Mm -hmm. So, for those who don't know you, uh, how tell us how you got in, how how you became a musician. What got you into music? Well, for sure, it wasn't for money. So, <laughs> but actually, uh, I, w I was influenced by my mother. She was uh, um, uh, actually as as a, as a youngster, she, we always had music around the house, but also art, because my father was an artist. So I got both talents happening. But that's not unusual, because a lot of musicians are artists. You know, to cite uh, just a couple, Miles Davis, who's a great artist, um, a few others I can't call off, but he was one I can, I can call off them. So the two fields uh, actually kind of uh, will go hand in hand as far as uh, did temperament. You did you dabble in both or just one? Uh, the music I studied hard, and uh, I'm still dabbling with art whenever I, whenever I can dabble. Okay. So, uh, but uh, the music took on because as an artist, you know, if, you, if you're going to be an artist, you got to be real messy. You got to have room. Okay. You got to get paint all over you, and then uh, uh, the 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 process is similar but different because you're dealing with canvases that you might. And it's not unusual. Uh, when I was in New York, I go by and see a cat. Man, he's an artist. Man, you got to be careful where you step because you put some paint on you. So you would see canvases piled over in the corner. You know, I said, "Well, man, what?" Ah, yeah, I said, you know, so, uh, so you, so you chose music because it took up less space? Well, it, it, they're both demanding, but uh, uh, it less, I said less messier, <laughs> for a better, <laughs> right? better word, uh, and uh, uh, the demanding in the same because you have to apply yourself, but you have to apply yourself to anything you do if you want to do it well. So uh, for me, I was gifted because as a kid, I could take stuff off the radio and go play it on my mother's piano. By the way, which I still have that piano with me today, it's uh, over 100 years old. Uh, the piano is a Whitney. Oh, wow. And uh, it was built in 1912. So I had nothing to do with it. It was there in the family before I got there. But uh, what a welcome thing. I find it, uh, uh, as, as I played it on as a kid. And then, uh, but it's funny, I didn't start with piano. I started with violin and clarinet. But when all along the piano was there, you know, beckoning to me, you know, <laughs> so. Uh, but it, it's not a waste because uh, it, as a musician, whatever you play, you should know your chord. Well, you got to know your chords. Right. You know, because you got to know what the pianist is doing. And, and the job that I have as a pianist, uh, I like it's very, it's very interesting because I'm in the middle. And I find myself accompanying and also in the background with the rhythm section. And uh, man, that's fun. Okay. I, I enjoy, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So, I, so, so I assume mm -hmm. your parents were, were supportive of your pursuit of music, is that right? Um, my mother was I I in, in a way that I heard so much of it. And uh, as a youngster, I'd be underneath the piano listening to her playing over the top of me. And, and it, was, it was amazing. I can't describe what that is like. Um, but I, I was like uh, inundated with sound, man. And uh, like I, I, you say, oh, I'd be, uh, I'd be all set, for, for, for et cetera, et cetera. But then I went away and did some uh, wrong stuff in my early sure. part of my life and got away from music. Mm. And uh, because, then, you know, as, as youngsters, and every child goes through the peer pressure thing. Right. And you want to be accepted by people who really are not on your level, but nobody's going to tell you that yeah. because people see you differently than you see yourself. 
So you had a, you had a rebellious phase, but then eventually you you can't you came back. To I music? came back to it, man, because uh, uh, I won't get into deal detail about rebellion, but I've seen some stuff, man. It's indescribable that people do to one another. That's just uh, it's just amazing, man. I didn't want to live like that. So uh, what brought you back to the what brought what brought you back to music? Okay, uh, so, um, I um, was in the riots in Chicago and Milwaukee. Right. And man, that was an experience I'll never forget for all my life. Cause people, if you wanted something, just break the window and reach in and scoop it out. People were taking uh, diamonds and stuff out of the glass window. Anyways, aside from all of that, I um, stumbled into uh, a, a bus station, and uh, my good friend, his name is his name is also Wilbur too. But he, I, I I want to. If he's still alive, I'd like to uh, connect with him again because we played some balls and dudes together, man. There's a whole book there I can't go into right now because we don't have time. Okay. But it's a whole book of experience of how we met and we went out on the road together. But I stumbled into the bus station and I, uh, oh man, I was wore out from the rides. I was tired, man. He left and went to the Bahamas and I was working on them docks, man, working on them ships, man, loading them uh, 200 pound bag cocoa beans and rice and all that stuff. Lots and of heavy lifting? Heavy lifting to load, throw it on the pallet. But see, you had to be careful because they spray the ships so they don't do a good job. And then beetles and stuff be down to keep you company. So that's that's how that went. But I went through those dues for a reason. And I saw this paper, it said new careers program and uh, I earn, learn while you earn. So uh, I went back home because I was in Milwaukee. I went back and kept my room in Minneapolis by the way, that's where I'm from. Uh, uh, and I, I went back there, and it's always good to have friends, people who I, uh, that I went to college with and uh, later on. Anyways, I came into the office to interview for a job with Urban League. And a friend of mine had an office next door, and uh, he told Matt, go ahead and hire him. He's cool. So I got the job there, and then that... Uh, led me to uh, get my degree from University of Minnesota. Okay. And it wasn't in music, but um, it actually was in studies and I went to work as a desk jockey for a while. And You know, I, I really, I'm really not that, uh, I'm not the kind of person to really be satisfied with because music is the heart and soul of me, man. And I went on back there and well, I'm glad I did. You've been a musician for how long now? Oh, I lost track of the years, man. Uh, whew, man. <laughs> It's hard to say. Uh, maybe over over 60 years. I don't know. Somewhere so, around there. So, what's the secret to keeping keeping at it for that long period of time? What kept you going? You gotta be crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Uh, the, the thing of it is, man, if if you find in your life something that's of substance to your soul, and you can keep uh, at it, man. Irregardless of what happens, because all kinds of distractions happen, man, that, that can uh, can can uh, waylay you, you know. And if you focus on what you want to be, because uh, right now, after this show, man, I go home and put on headphones and I do do what I got to do. Because the things that happen uh, with music, man, because uh, uh, I'm the type of musician. There's three types of musicians. I always tell them. There's the musician that can read. And that's it. That's not. Th that's nothing wrong. I'm not. I'm not against reading. I read when I can, but I don't like it because uh, it, it's just there on a paper. <laughs> yeah. Then there's the type of musician that interprets what's on the paper. That's okay. But I like what I do. Mm -hmm. I sit down, play a piano. I don't need no music. I sit down. And I just go through some stuff, man. So you like to create? Absolutely. But the I don't create. The creator comes through me. Okay. See, I'm just a vessel. I'm mm -hmm. just a vessel. Is, is and, that and what keeps you going? That keeps you me going. You the vessel? Man. Oh, through the vessel. The spirit goes through, my, through me, and I'm the vessel. And I don't take credit for any uh, for myself. Um, I can't, sometimes I can't buy an idea. So I watch a football game. <laughs> or sometimes I might get, I might hear something in a movie okay. score and hear a phrase. And man, let me check that out. The and the phrase, comes? Uh, it, or a phrase can be a whole tune, okay. and that's where they get into a thing about uh, this latest thing about the, the suing each other over a line, all that mm -hmm. stuff, man. Well, see, I'm gonna tell you what it is that um, basically, because I've written stuff, man, 
And so, oh, that sounds like something else. Yeah, probably does. But uh, uh, they can say this, this create creation, you can create a song on this side of the, uh, of, of the world and somebody else can create a song on the other side of the world that sounds like yours or yours sounds like theirs. Mm. I, I can hardly explain that. Okay. But um, uh, the copyright laws will give, they at least last I heard, found out, they give you leniency right. that you can take a phrase. Right. And so uh, go ahead, go ahead. So anyways, um, mm. you are working on something new, right? Tell me, I tell hope us so. about that. I what are you working so. on these days? Um, I'm in the process of writing some charts, man, and uh, doing a CD coming up, uh, which uh, I haven't finished naming it, because uh, with, 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 with this music, man, uh, I might write a song and ain't got no title, or I might write a song and got a title and no music, or I might write a music and ain't got no, it's like that. But then sometimes it comes all at once. Okay. All you know what? I forgot to ask you. For those who aren't familiar with music, what kind of what kind of music are you? What kind of music is this album going to be? This album that I'm coming up with is going to be um, uh, more or less. Is it jazz? Is it rock? Is it more funk? Or uh, well, it's going to have some influences uh, in it, of course, with jazz, but the uh, the type of thing that uh, expresses. Uh, moods of the subject that I'm going to have, which I'm being tight because uh, I don't know what artists are listening. I, as artists, I don't give away nothing. So we're going to say it's going to express the mood of what the subject is. And so uh, when a person listen to it, I'd like for them to go on a trip. You see what I'm saying? What's, and, the, mood? And, and, What's and, the mood of your, new, of your new project? I say it has something to do with water. Okay. Now I'm going to stop there. Okay. And uh, anyways, going through the whole process, is when they listen to it, I want them to uh, be moving on a trip. Okay. And with their ears, and and we'll go through different phases. And as far as ranging stuff, because I got a CD out already called uh, "I'll Be All Right." Okay. And uh, I will give this away because most artists do this. The title song. You don't want to put up front first. Right. The title song I got in uh, is, is, by the way, it's beautiful vocal, called "I'll." Uh, it's called "I'll Be All Right," and um, that's about the third or fourth tune on the CD. I haven't listened to my CD for a while, so I'm gonna guess about the third or fourth tune on the CD. And the reason for it is you want people to listen through the other stuff mm -hmm. before they get to the title tune, mm -hmm. okay, and, and whatnot. So, but this project. Probably, I have no idea how the tunes are going to be arranged. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you said but you want to take them on a journey for this new album, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Where are you taking them? Well, I, I, I hope on a, uh, uh, like a, a, an enjoyment and, and a, a, a thought trip of um, almost like a writer does, which is uh, writers uh, create a mental visual scene, real good writers do. I'm trying to, I'm not saying I'm real great or anything, <laughs> but I'm trying to create something similar to that with music. Okay. And, uh, so what, uh, what, what's the place? What's the, other than water, what, is there a particular place? Well. <laughs> is it a happy <laughs> place? Is it a sad oh, place? Oh, is it, it a melancholy a, place? Is it nostalgic? Is it hopeful? It's all of those. Okay. Because uh, what would be uh, each song is an expression of part of that main uh, thing that, that invo involves different parts of, of that the main uh, uh, feature, and uh, uh, I, I like I say I'm excited about it. As, but the things you got to do, there's a lot of work I got to do, man. I, before I even think about a rhythm section, I've got um, uh, instruments I want to use okay, well, on the CD. We'll have to save it for the next show because we're out of time. Oh hey, no! No. Thank you very much for joining us here on Random Access as we leave with some of your music. Thank you very much. Good night. And uh, that's this piece is called Like Sunny. There you go. And, uh, from the engagement that my trio did at the, at the Zion Methodist Church.